So we're moving along in our Unit 8 notes. Um, we have been finished with, or are now finished with motivation, and then we have two more kind of terms to talk about. Emotion being the one that we'll, we'll talk about now. And there are theories, just like there were theories of emotion or um, motivation, now we'll talk about the theories of emotion. So emotions are a mix of both physiological activation, being the physical response that you have, the expressive behavior, so how you show your emotions, and then the conscious experience, so the cognitive process of what's going on in your brain. And there's some theories here. In our notes, you got to make sure that you kind of see it visually and write down some examples as well as some notes from the slides and what I say. So James Lang being the first theory, William James and Carl Lang proposed an idea that was completely opposed to the common sense view of emotion. Um, and the theory proposes that the physiological activity precedes the emotional experience. So bodily changes ultimately cause you to feel emotions is what they're saying. So you have the stimulus, um, let's say you're laying on your couch and you see a man outside your window. This would be the example that you wanna write down. You then have the physiological arousal. So your heartbeat starts racing, which activates your sympathetic nervous system, dilate your people, slow digestion, perspiration, blah, blah, blah. And then that creates the emotion of being incredibly scared. Um, the next theory is Cannon Bard. We're going to kind of move quickly through these because you need to not only know the theories but then compare them. Walter Cannon and Philip Bard question James Lang and propose that emotion triggering stimulus and body's arousal takes place simultaneously. So James Lang said it's the stimulus, our arousal, then the emotion and then our physical arousal causes the emotion. Whereas Cannon Bard said, no, no, no. Our physical response is, does not create the emotion. They happen at the same time because they all have something to do with each other. So the thalamus produces both the physical and emotion simultaneously um, as it sends messages throughout the brain and body. So um, with Cannon Bard, you have the stimulus, you have the physiological response, let's say, of perspiring, um, like let's say someone puts their hand on your shoulder from behind, you tense up and then you have the emotion of being startled. Our next theory is two-factor theory and you need to jot down that this is also called the Schachter-Singer theory. So the other guys just stuck with their last names. We need to know these guys' last names as well as what they called the theory, which is two-factor. Here's the thing with two-factor. With Cannabar to James Lang, they said it's just the physiological response and emotion, which creates or has something to do with the emotion. Schachter Singer said, mm, there's something else. There's another factor in addition to the physiological response, hence making it two-factor. So they proposed yet another theory which suggested that our physiological and our cognitions so you should circle, underline, engrave in your brain, cognitions create emotions. Emotions have two factors, the physical arousal and the cognitive label. The cognitive label being what you should write down and engrave in your brain. That is super, super duper important. So the big thing with this theory is interpreting environmental cues and physical arousal and placing a label on it. So let's say you see a man in the dark alley at night what this says is that your heart starts beating quickly and your breathing rate increases. Plus, let's say the man is then waving at you and smiling, and therefore you label it as, oh, this isn't a dangerous situation. So this would be the cognitive label of, this is not a dangerous situation. I am not scared. I am happy. Okay, so if you just had the physical response there, you would remain scared but then because you're able to say, oh, no, this is safe, this is fine, look, he's a nice man, you can then cognitively label that, oh, okay, I can be happy now. So physiological similarities, here's the thing, and you should make sure to jot this down kind of in the margin, maybe around Schachter Singer. Physiological responses are pretty much similar across the emotions of fear, anger, love, and boredom. So excitement and fear involve similar physiological arousal. Let me give you a scenario. Let's say you're watching the premiere of like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 
Paranormal Activity 502. You're incredibly scared. Don't be like all tough guy, like all oh, those, those things don't scare me. Just pretend, okay? Um, let's say that you are beyond afraid, okay? What's going on? You may be like startled a little bit. You're probably sweating, breathing quickly. Um, your heart, bait, heart rate is pumping, blah, blah, blah. Maybe even a little shaky, okay? Now let's say that your brother or sister has done whatever they do that pushes your buttons. My sister would always borrow my clothes without asking and then ruin them, and that would make me so mad. Um, but let's say they come in your room or they steal something of yours or they just are themselves and they, that gets on your nerves, whatever it is. You're super mad, okay? What are you doing? Your probably heart rate's increasing, your breathing's increasing, you're sweating, maybe a little shaky because you're so mad. Get what I'm saying? The physical responses to anger and fear or even excitement and fear are incredibly similar. So you have to, according to some theorists, you have to have the cognitive label. And we're gonna talk about that more in a moment. So physiological differences with responses like finger temperature and facial muscles change during fear, rage, and joy. Um, the amygdala shows differences in activation during emotions of anger and rage. It's the activity of the left hemisphere, more happy, and the right hemisphere, more the depressed emotions. So what is the connection between how we think, the cognition, and how we feel? Can we actually change our emotions by changing our thinking? And I just have a little demonstration here that for my in-class AP Psychology, we'll do a little demonstration. So I don't want to ruin that for you in watching this. But what I want you to think about is if you've been sad and someone has ever told you, if you smile, it will help. They've got some research on their side there and that if you just create an emotion outwardly if you create the attitude outwardly like you smile and you stand sit up a little straighter that will then cause you to have more positive emotions and most research all research that i've seen will support this all right just a couple more things to talk about we've got some more names here is the yunk is the biggest name here emphasizes some emotions are immediate without conscious appraisal. So the young says we have the event and then we have the emotional response. There's no time for a conscious appraisal. So he argues again that emotional reactions can be quicker than our interpretations of the situation. So we feel before we think. Let me give you an example. Let's say we feel scared, and you should be writing this down, when we're in the woods and we hear a twig crack Okay, that makes us scared. Before we even have time to think about it, we like flinch, like, <gasps> what was that? And we are afraid, okay? Uh, we have the emotional response. So research on neurological processes supports this idea. Some neural pathways involved in emotion bypass the cortical areas involved in thinking. So one pathway runs from the eye or ear via the thalamus to the amygdala, not even reaching the cortical areas. This shortcut enables quick precognitive emotional responses before our intellect intervenes. Lazarus, however, along with Schachter Singer, Singer emphasized that appraisal also determines emotion. So Lazarus argues that while our brain does process a lot unconsciously, even instantaneously felt emotions require some sort of cognitive emotion, so, some kind of cognitive appraisal of the situation. So otherwise, how do we know what we are responding to? So Lazarus says we have the event and then we have the appraisal, even if it only takes a split second before we have an emotional response. He says, otherwise, how will we know what we're feeling? So the appraisal may be effortless and may not be conscious of it, but it is still happening. So with the example of feeling scared in the woods and you hear the crack, you had to appraise the situation as one that is dangerous in order to feel scared. I don't know about you, but a twig cracking doesn't just make me scared. It's that I have cognitively appraised the situation of I'm alone in the woods and maybe it's dark and scary and there's animals lurking, right? Like, who is kind of scary and well, maybe something's coming. So these two slides just kind of give you what I, I just told you about Zayunk and Lazarus. Zayunk arguing 
No, we don't have time for the emotional label. So if you want kind of in words what I told you about the young, here it is. Please feel free to pause. And then, he, <clears throat> excuse me, here it is with Lazarus arguing that even if it's effortless and unconscious, we still make the appraisal. Otherwise, how do we feel? So again, feel free to pause here um, if you need to see this in order to help you better understand. Last thing is our dimensions of emotion. Our emotions have two dimensions. We have valence, which I want you to think of as positive or negative. Okay, valence is positive or negative emotions. And then arousal is like the intensity. It's the high or low intensity of the, the emotion. So this is kind of like a continuum. It's two dimensions in one, so we have it on a circle, right? So high arousal with positive valence being over here. Okay, so these being high positive arousal valence, these being um, positive with low arousal, whereas these are negative valence, low arousal, and that you're bored sluggish, just kind of like, eh, whatever. Whereas high arousal, negative valence is very intense anger feelings. And yes, you need to know each of these, but most particularly the difference between balance and arousal.